Daisy chains and a sweet champagne And two days alone with you Not too far from a city by a car Oh, maybe we can make a more romantic trip by train to the country That's where I want to be Yeah, so yeah. Good good morning. I think it yeah, it's still morning. Still morning. Good morning. Welcome everybody to Heritage Homestead Creations. Ah, that's what a wonderful <laughs> beginning of a new channel. It is a absolutely spectacular morning, December eighth here, in the central part of the country and the central part of the plains sort of ish. <clears throat> and uh, we are getting set up today. Uh, for what will be a fun project and obviously you know what it is based on the title of this but uh, we haven't had a chance to get to it and we're um, we have decided to get a start on it today getting set up here and I want to run through it uh, T's been uh, getting the uh, planer set up uh, yesterday we did a a little bit of a straightening up up here uh, to get going for the work and we pulled out some of our material that we have for uh, making the uh, project with so uh, what we're building today is going to be a Dutch style cheese press and uh, uh, there's a lot of examples of them on the internet and you can go and look it up and there's a lot of different styles and techniques some simpler ones and some fancier ones but of those of you who uh, enjoyed the the building of the apple press um, you'll know that I, I like to do things kind of um, uh, with class some fanciness some some high detailed work and whatnot and yeah I could slap together some boards and make something press uh, press your cheese uh, but we we want something that is heritage homestead uh, quality something that uh, if you take care of once it's built will last you uh, a long long time just like the apple presses are so we're going to build something that is um, uh, some style some class some quality and make it worthwhile and so I have done my research and I've got my other cell phone right here and when you go in here and you search the internet and you see Dutch cheese press there's many different some stainless steel ones and some wood ones and uh, I came across this one just recently this is a new one and it's on curdner.com of course it would be the appropriate place for it um, but as I was looking through everything, there were no presses. So here's one right there. Very similar. Very similar. And this is the same one. So this, this image right here and this image are the same press. And up until a couple of days ago when I decided I was going to go ahead and get going on it, I had not seen these. And there were some, you know me, uh, technical, uh, mechanical kinds of issues that I was seeing with some of these others. Okay, and uh, this was the closest one I had seen up until this point. And then a few days ago, when I did a search to see if uh, about um, you know how I wanted to go ahead and set uh, the pieces in the design, uh, this one popped up and it answered a few issues for me that I'm really happy with because it was what I was intending to do. And here I found a good example of it. So in this one right here you will see that this upper lever arm is bolted to the press rod that goes down the middle of it. Um, let's see, uh, grab a pencil here. So this press rod right here uh, is only bolted on one side. If you look very carefully on this one, this pressing arm has two pieces that go around it that center the pressure on the bar so there's not likely going to be twisting. It is also uh, center hinged on the uh, upright on this side. I like that. That's very structurally sound. It also has a guide plate that goes in between it and I think we're going to do 
a slightly different uh, setup similar to this one where it has uh, a follower groove in there we're going to do this uh, see in this one you've got this vertical upright and then you've got that vertical upright right there uh, that look kind of like this and this if you kind of sketch them out with the drill holes oops drill holes and the and the anchor the pivot point the pivot bolt for the lever arm um, there's this slot right here and here uh, that I'm not sure what the function is on it for this particular uh, build because uh, because the um, uh, this follower plate is actually wider and it is guided and that's to help keep this plunger from moving side to side and back and forth to help keep it centered on top of uh, your uh, curds as they're being pressed uh, so I'm gonna instead of doing it wider I'm gonna do it the same width here and I'm gonna put a little notch on either side big enough to follow in that groove and that should keep it from going side to side that's what I'm gonna do differently than this one but other than that most of this is the is uh, pretty pretty good I like I like it I like it um, I, oh no I take it back I am gonna do something different you can see in this uh, uh, picture these side support legs that come out here for this brace and you need that brace for all the weight being out here uh, because if you didn't have that this amount of weight may pull and tip over cause it to tip over on you and you don't want that I'm gonna actually build a frame that goes underneath this platform right here so let's set this aside and let's look at it so I've got it sketched out uh, this will be that platform these are going to be three quarter inch by one and a half on edge uh, I'm going to do a 10 inch by 10 inch platform and uh, the plunger up here bunch of holes and I just kinda got it sketched out it's it's not exactly accurate and then I sketched out my thinking on this now here's the interesting thing uh, in doing that if you look in the picture real closely these two pieces right here they're not a full three quarters of an inch they're about a half inch and maybe a little bit less so we're gonna look at that in our material but I put together uh, a quick sketch just for reference on rough dimensions of these pieces so that I can put together the stock well that's what we've done I've got some uh, five and a half roughly that one might be six inches uh, eight foot pieces of uh, red oak stock that we're going to be using and this piece when we milled it out on the bandsaw mill uh, for whatever reason I got a bad or a different uh, dimension on it this is only about a little over a half an inch uh, and we're going to plant it down and then I've got uh, this piece right here so let's talk about these that one and that one are very nice straight grains very few um, uh, defects or not in them and uh, these two will be used for uh, uh, some of the longer pieces now this piece is right here is pretty good too but we have a big knot here su a substantial knot here and another one here so I've got a workable piece from here to here and here to here from which to get stock from this piece um, uh, has some weathering it's set out and it looks kind of rough now with the grain from the weathering and it is also a quarter sawn quarter sawing board uh, against the green along the pith so there is a couple two two and a half inches along that edge that are not really usable but if we can run this through the planer we got some natural wormy holes some of you are familiar with the wood that I've been using there's a whole lot of them and that will add character and if we can uh, work uh, with the pieces like between this knot and this knot there's a very nice piece there's a very nice piece right there if we can get that uh, cleaned up 
this one will make for some very beautiful upright pieces because of you can see the flecking in the quarter sawn. So that might make the the vertical uprights for it. Um, this piece is only for, and we're probably only going to need a little portion like that for those little. Uh, I don't know what you want to call these pieces that are on the sides here, like that, that support it, uh, centered. Uh, that's what it'll go, but we're going to plane the whole board. And so we're going to plane all these down to an equal width. Uh, we've got a bunch of those pieces that will have to come out. And then this wide board right here is what we're going to use for the platform. Get the lighting here, which is going to be a, a 10 inch by 10 inch piece. Now, normally I like to run the whole board, but there's a pretty good split right here, a checking here and here down to this knot, which means the upper piece was going to not service. I can get something out here and here, but the upper piece isn't going to serve as a wide board. And I measured from this knot down to this knot, and I got more than 20 inches, about 22 inches. So that one piece right there, I think, is going to serve to make both of these. But as I always do, I'm going to plane the majority of this up and all of this up so that uh, if something happens, I've got maybe just a little bit more material than I need in order to complete this project. I will be building two of these, one for myself and one for a friend. One for the friends. Who's the friend? Three little goats. Homestead. Three little goats homestead are neighbors down the road that have the goats and do the goat's milk and do the goat's milk soap. Um, uh, you should check them out. Three little goats homestead. Um, so this one of these will be going to them and then one will be ours and then um, we will be open to making some for those who might be interested. So for now this is Oh God, a very long intro, but it's this is how you do it. This is a how-to video, uh, and so if you want to make them yourself, uh, you know, hopefully we give you enough information to do that, and um, the thinking process to it, and there you go. Uh, so what we'll do is pause. Uh, we're going to run all this stuff. We save all our wood chips. That's why T has put down the the. Um, the, the tarp right there and we're going to get everything cut out into its pieces into its basic dimensions and then we'll catch back up with you when we get there so say bye for the moment we'll be back in a little bit all right folks after much ado we have planed down and edged up all our pieces uh, we still need to cut them to length but it's been taking quite quite a bit of work so let's take a look at what we've got here Okay, for my bottom frame, which the platform will sit on, the bottom frame, I've got a whole bunch of inch and a half, and I think, check this right here, that's seven eighths. Uh, so it's actually a little bit more than three quarter, which is fine. Fatter, thicker, stronger. So it's inch and a half by seven eighths. Uh, I'll have to cut them to length, but I should have more than enough there. Uh, I have the two 10 inch by 10 inch. Now, when I started edging these up, I ended up running less than 10, and that's okay. That's okay. What I'm going to do, it'll be a little narrower, but I'm still going to make it a full 10 inches wide. And you can see I've got a couple of nice sections. I think I'm going to work on this one. And yeah, there are, there's still some exposed wood there. Uh, because of the um, wood not being thick enough, but I kept planing and planing, and this got down to three quarters, and actually I think it's just a hair under three quarters. So I didn't want to go too much thinner than that, but I'll clean the rest of that up with the belt sander, or take it, take a piece from here. I don't really want all my wormy holes in there. See that? All those wormy holes. I don't really want that in there because the way will be falling on to this this is the only piece that I really don't really don't want a bunch of wormy holes in over here on these pieces it'll be on the side and the top if they got that character it shouldn't really matter but I should get what I need out of this and um, yeah so I've got more than I need uh, this one board cleaned up real nice it's got some superb character in it 
It's got some wavy knots. It's got some serious flecking from the uh, quarter sawn. And of all of these are quarter sawn, but this isn't showing up here as well. That one is. You can get some nice flecking in this. This piece is going to be for those, so I should be able to cut a couple of those out. And uh, the remainder of these pieces will go to all the two side pieces, the upper top brace that goes in between what will be two datas where they get screwed together, and this this floating piece that keeps the plunger in place. And the lever arm has got to be a two inch piece. And <clears throat> I think it's going to come out of this stock as well too. I think I got more than enough for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these and I'm going to start cutting all of these pieces, those four pieces, out of these. Then I'm going to start on those and whatever scrap I have remaining we have just a little over four inches here, uh, four and a quarter. So I think I can get two uh, pieces that are two inches wide. And this is, like I said, this is all seven eighths. I left it thick. I want it thick and bulky and strong. And then, of course, we have this uh, half inch piece. And it went down cleanly to a half. I got twice as much as I need there, I think pretty sure of it because I only think I need about about a 10 inch piece two inches wide and two inches wide so there's one for one of the uh, lever arms and there's some for the other lever arm so I got I got enough there and there you go so we had a big pile of shavings cleaned it up now we got a bunch of sawdust and that will always uh, get recycled into uh, compost or whatever for our gardens so it is lunchtime uh, we, when we come back from lunch, uh, we'll go ahead and cut all the pieces to length. So we'll end up with a stack, and I want to leave. We're going to make this part one, and we'll leave uh, part one just the preparations of all the stock to get it down there. Uh, part two will be refining, sanding, rounding, uh, notching, uh, dadoing, drilling, and all that good stuff to get those pieces to where they'll fit together. But there you go, my friends. Um, we're almost there. Let me go eat lunch, and we'll come back and um, cut these all to length. All right, so bust it. You ain't busting that. All right, yeah. so we got a bunch of scrap pieces and parts, and little bits and pieces. That'll be kindling. That's the uh, uh, pith of that one board. That's not all kindling or something. We have a few couple of little pieces that were ah, oh, we can see those but I tell you what you saw all those boards and it didn't it looked like a whole lot laying out flat but once you get it out down into pieces it doesn't look like it is as much so let's take a look at what we have here let's get the um, our little parts list here and let's take a look so we have let's go down here all right, so we got two of these, one, two. We have two of these long ones, one, two. All right, so this turned out to be. Let's start. Let's start. Let's talk about dimensions. So if you wanted to do this, we can do this. Uh, you could do this. I'm not going to do a measure drawing unless I get a huge, huge request, and we'll see how that goes. All right, so this is just under 10 because of the width in order to clean it up. Okay, but it's 10 inches wide. So the idea is that we'll go 10 inches from this outer corner to this outer corner. Where's my pencil? So I can point. All right, here. So we're going to hold 10 inches from here to here. So that's from here to here. So I've got three, one, two, three bracings that'll go in the middle here, here, and here. So that the, this distance, and these were cut, I say these were. These are plain down to seven eighths. They're actually pretty thick, and uh, they're one and a half inches wide here. So these are 24 inches long. So I, I went, uh, I went ahead and made them 24 to give us a little more leverage out there on the end. And so we got two of the outside, and I got three braces. The length of these I measured by measuring, putting up two of these boards onto my board, and then marking it 
at to what it wants to be to be the same as the width of this since it's not exactly 10 doesn't really matter but that's what we've got now we've got uh, two or we got our um, our, our press plate uh, we got uh, our ten and a half which will be the cross member actually ten and three quarters is what I caught which, which will be the cross member across the top of it we got our eleven and three quarter here which will be this piece that rides in the middle on top of this here then we got our sixteen inch side and then our twenty four inch side and the same over here, 24, 16, 11 and 3 quarters, and uh, 10 and 3 quarters. Now the 10 and 3 quarters will sit into a dado that will be in the 16 and the 24 up top here. Okay. Then, let's see what else we got. And then we have, uh, so there's, these are the two sides. Uh, this is the top, and this is the rider that goes on top of the plunger, which will be these uh, three inch pieces. Now the width on these um, I originally had noted that they would be four. Well I just ran them down until I found good clean wood and left it a little wide. A little heavier duty, a little wider. Uh, it will be just fine. So I've got those I think they're about four and a quarter. Those are about four and a quarter. Really doesn't matter folks. You can do whatever you want to do. But I you know I did what I did uh, just to I like to I don't like to get rid of wood if it's on there and it's beautiful and the wider it is the more flecking you'll be able to show and the, the, the more wood you'll be able to dis display on your piece so we've got four uh, side side uh, top and guide piece uh, side side top and guide our top and guide piece top plate top plate lower frame lower frame so what are we missing here oh and the plunger plunger piece so this piece right here uh, will be that one right there and that one okay so and I'm not talking I, think I gave you the links on all those what did I make this and I went a little short on this 20, 20 inches 20 inches on those because I don't think you need to be as high because you can subtract an inch and a half here plus the three quarters of the plate there's two and a quarter inches that it doesn't need to be to end up uh, coming um, close to the top I don't really need it sticking up past the top too much um, but you know you see that in the different ones what do we have left is this lever arm that will apply the pressure and what do we have for that well we have this half inch stuff that I have yet to rip down and I'm not going to rip it yet because I want to set my width based on what I do with this so this piece as I stated was a uh, leftover and that's the rest all that right there is the rest of it uh, this is the leftover from one of the wide ones I have since ripped it down to clean it up to whatever I have I want to get close to two inches but I'm not quite at two inches it's going to be about one and seven eighths However, I'm thinking ahead into how I want to make this lever arm because this lever arm's got to have these notches on this end of the handle so that you can hook hook uh, your weight on to lever to lever it down. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to get it set out where I'm going to cut cut um, cut these things uh, or um, excuse me. I'm going to set it out and measure it. From where the hinge pin is going to go, which will be one in here, one in here, if there's two of them being cut out of here. And then I'm going to go down here where I'm going to measure out. I'm not sure on that yet. i got to still kind of calculate that. And I'm going to drill holes, large enough holes, uh, spaced evenly right up the center of this. And if I do this right, I'll take a drill bit and I'll have a whole bunch of holes and nice and neatly up the center, similar to what will be here, except for these. Uh, what will happen is once I get the holes in in place and centered properly and spaced properly I'm going to rip this board right down the middle cutting right down the middle of those holes leaving a little notch on either side of the top of one of these boards if that all works as planned so this board will become this then I'll probably cut out the, the not so 
pretty there's a chip out right there and whatnot so I'll cut that out and then we'll make uh, we'll make our uh, I want to call them gussets these pieces that are going to glue on the outside to connect this piece to this piece to provide support around so that the center of the pressure is in the middle of the lever arm so to speak um, and those will be cut out once these this is ripped down lots to do we got a lot of holes cut and slots to cut in these but that's going to be it for this video it's uh, as we are essentially done with the majority of the wood prepping now comes some fine tuning stuff lots of sanding um, some rounding over yep. some slots making some hole making and uh, we're going to leave that for part two, I think, because uh, we've gotten kind of long in this. Yeah, sound, sounds good, she says. <laughs> All right. Stay tuned, my friends. We're just getting started. Although I do think um, most of the work is done. And we should be able to um, wrap this up in, in uh, the next video. All right, catch you on that one. Uh, don't forget to um, thumbs up, not thumbs down, thumbs up. Hit the like and subscribe if you haven't. And uh, stick around. We do a lot of fun things at, here at Heritage Homestead Creations where we create everything you want for your homestead. Yep. So what's it, what's it time to do now? Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Wouldn't you know it, it's time for the blooper part of it. I blundered on one little thing here. I forgot to explain this last little piece that we have here. On our drawing, we have this uh, round little foot. Okay, That's what that one last little piece will be. That was the one piece that got left over. I also did want to throw in as a little bonus feature, these pieces right here that uh, we had left over there were three of them um, we got a purpose for these and let me spin around over here you recognize that honey uh, yeah who did that I did it was weak <laughs> it was weak you're too strong for it. I like that response it was weak well we need to make a new handle make a new handle and if you'll notice, even with the rake handle, that's about the right length. Yep. And this rake handle is about the right length. Now these are little, about, uh, not even quite 7 8 diameter, right? So that's about the same diameter as this. I like making my handles a little bigger. bigger. Uh, this is, uh, this is one I did for me. It allows me to really get it so it's a little bit longer than normal. But it's also bigger around. This is about an inch and an eighth in diameter. And all I did was take a strip that was ripped off of one of the scrap pieces like this. Took a round over and went over it. And then just hand sanded uh, using a little grinder. Right angle grinder. And, and kind of hand made my little taper to go into those for uh, like my my hoe. I've replaced a lot of handles, a lot of handles in my time, but that's what this will be. And we got a friend that we already know needs a couple handles couple herself. handles because she's in broke them. So there it is, blooper. I forgot one. <laughs> forgot one piece and a bonus material. These already have a place to go. So bye, bye. for real. Bye for real. Bye for real. <laughs>